So we're talking about your questions on lab three. And there's lab three, for which I've only grayed out uh, number 10, uh, which means it's uh, extra credit if you want it. Um, I guess we should start at one and try and go down the list about how far we've gotten. Do we have questions on one? I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty satisfied with one. Yeah, yeah I feel like I'm satisfied with one and two. Okay. Um, Let's see. Walk first place is okay. So, uh, right, one and two are that page exercise so one and three. two. How the hell do we tell? What, what the impulse <laughs> was? Sorry, sorry. That's not, that's not bad. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, uh, maybe it's an appropriate expression of frustration. Um, Right, two non-minimum phase weightless whose sum is minimum phase. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, I mean, how long are, are the wavelets that you that you found? Um, you know, like two two points, three points. For one. Yeah. Two points. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Like one without Z and one with Z. Well, sure, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I, I just wondered they're they're about their time length. Okay, that's that's easy. All right. Um, right, and then you just had to do uh, a conjugate. Okay. Um, all right. So then three, you have questions on. Um, so uh, uh, exercise two on this page. Figure three shows a Hilbert transform pair and the real imaginary parts of the Fourier transform of a causal response. Actually, I should enlarge this tremendously. Um, describe the causal response. Um, right, so this is a question of, um, of seeing a Hilbert transform and, um, uh, or, or seeing the Fourier, tra uh, seeing a Fourier transform and, uh, and, and trying to figure out what the, uh, what the, what the original looks like. Okay, so let's look at figure three. Okay. Um, and um, so we have um, right in the real and so this is. Um, <clears throat> okay, this is uh, a um, a real and imaginary pair, and then I said that there was um, a better look. Yeah, so here's the full sized image. Okay. Um, and. Um, so what we want to know is um, what does this look like in the time domain? Um, now, one way to derive this would be to to uh, you know drop it into um, uh, drop it into uh, FFT lab and um, and then uh, uh, see what that see what that looks like. Okay, so let's somewhere here. I have FFT lab. Okay. 
So the uh, <coughs> um, the first thing I want is um, is a uh, let's see. Can I enlarge this page? Oh, I can't. Yes. Okay. So there's several there's several elements here. Um, do any of you recognize the uh, the impulse response of the Hilbert transform in here? The um, the you know there's there's a uh, a cosine wave there's a sine wave on the imaginary right so those have got to be a key to something. There's a um, um, there's impulses and there's Hilbert um, Hilbert transforms of, of impulses. Okay. Now now the um, um, the in the frequency domain, right, and, and in the time domain, right, the the real is essentially the Hilbert transform of the imaginary, and vice versa. <clears throat> um, so uh, that's uh, uh, that kind of makes sense. Now let's see if we want a sine, a slow sine and cosine um, in the uh, in omega in frequency. Then uh, let's see. Then we should we should put something on the real. Uh, maybe at lower frequency. So here we have a, a here we have a, a a cosine on the real right, which is what we have up here, and we have a a. a um, we have a sine wave on the imaginary. So, right, the, and and is this is this wave uh, causal here? Uh, uh, the real the real uh, time domain is that causal? Yeah, there's nothing at negative time. Um, maybe we should make it origin centered just to be sure. Um, and now you can see we have a cosine. You know, the cosine starts in the middle. So. Uh, I guess this this plot is non-origin centered. Maybe that's that's one of the first clues. You know, zero frequency is on the left side. Zero frequency is on the on the right side on, on the on the left side of the imaginary as well. So maybe that's that's the first clue. Okay. So now I should be able to just add things, right? And 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 I'll get uh, um, you know I'll get a um, you know, all I have to do is is add things, and I'll and I'll get a um, um, uh, and, and they'll you know anything I add to the um, to any one component is just going to get added. You know, the whole thing is just adds together. Things just sum together, right? So, um, uh, so if I want to cons let's let's see if it works. Um, you know, so over here we've got a uh, on the real, we've got a uh, a spike, right? So I can put that that spike into here. Um, maybe that's too tall. Uh, maybe not. <clears throat> um, so the uh, <clears throat> so right away that that you know that spike leads to this uh, this uh, waviness over here. So there must be some. Okay, and I and I don't have you know it 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 still constrain the imaginary to be what it 
what it was, right? So we'd have to put in um, the whole uh, the whole Hilbert uh, uh, response. Let's see. Maybe I'll. Yeah. See, I take that away. It flattens out. So I'll put a spike over over here instead. So it looks like it's about at the zero crossing. And now if I go to the imaginary and I put a spike in there, <clears throat> we should have uh, another part of it. And maybe I need to, uh, yeah, OK. Um, so we're starting to, uh, um, to build it up. And uh, <clears throat> So what if I uh, what if I what if I zero out the imaginary uh, uh, in the in the time domain? Okay, maybe that's going to get me where I want because one of the things that we should have here is a real causal response. Although we you know we need to know is it uh, is it is it all real or what? Right. So we got to try some things and see what happens. Um, and I'm just curious to see what happens if I zero out the. Um, so now I can, I can everywhere I, I click, it's going to zero out the imaginary. Let's see. Dragging should work too, but it's often not fast enough to like repeatedly drag. <clears throat> so that that. Uh, um, that put in some kind of interesting uh, um, uh, it didn't put in the Hilbert transform um, uh, but it uh, it gave me some some version of both spikes in the uh, in the Omega domain Now we can try uh, try some things like uh, you know, oops, I didn't want to zero that. I wanted to draw. So I'm trying to put in a, a little tiny uh, Hilbert transform thing in there, um, and uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's having the right effect, but um, let's see. Maybe if I greatly magnify these, OK, there's something going on here. Let me try zeroing the uh, um, the imaginary in time again. Uh, actually, that made. Uh, that made this sort of like a uh, this other spike sort of like a, a Hilbert transform too. Um, so maybe it has to be um, uh, not zero on the imaginary, but uh, but have some uh, um, some sort of symmetry. You know, maybe it's uh, in in time too. Okay, now even though somehow I lost my uh, 
I lost my my uh, um, lost my solution set, but fortunately I do have some. Um, Some resources. Okay. Now I got to go back to origin centered here, right? Because I have a a non causal wavelet. All right. So if I uh, if I zero the um, the the part before zero, let's see what that looks like. I'm kind of far away from what I wanted. Um, so we've got, uh, let's see, the draw. OK, we got the, uh, the cosine and sine. And then uh, we add a, um, uh, a spike. Um, in the uh, in the real, and then zero out the non-causal part. Okay, now that's starting to look like something. Um, <clears throat> and. Uh, Uh, oh, I should zero out the non-causal part in the imaginary too. Let's see what that does. And I think I see a spike and a Hilbert transform response, maybe? Both of them over here. So now it's just a matter of, you know, what else is there that uh, what else is there that that will lead to another spike and another uh, and another Hilbert transform response uh, instead over on the real omega side? So that's the key. Um, we do have to remember when you don't have it origin centered, it's just the uh, the non causal part is over here on the right side, and that's uh, that's always crucial to remember.
So maybe the other spike is uh, let's see the spike in the imaginary. That must that could be a negative time. Um, so let's put that in. Uh, I've got to draw. Okay, and then I got to go through the process of uh, of uh, zeroing out. Zeroing out. I think that's kind of close. That's the type of thing we're looking at. I've got a spike and it's Hilbert transform over here, and a spike here and it's Hilbert transform. I'm sort of not too easy to see. Um, if I make it larger. Can see it easier, and then I got to go through and zero out the the non-causal part. I mean, if you have a spike, right, um, in the a spike in the frequency domain. Should be a sine wave in the, uh, or cosine wave in the, in the, in the time domain. Um, so then it's uh, it's it's actually setting the non-causal part to zero, that turns the, uh, uh, that turns them into Hilbert transforms of each other, you know, between the real and imaginary and the frequency domain. So I, I think this is pretty neat. We can we can uh, you know because the Hilbert transform assumes that there is no that it's causal, and we can we can actually force this wavelet into that, and then we get those automatic Hilbert transforms. You know, one Hilbert transform here, and another Hilbert transform over here. Okay, so um, that's number three, which is number two on this page. Yeah. And I mean, you can give me a, an expression for you know what the causal response is the sum of, or you can give me, uh, you can just describe it. Um, okay. What do you want to look at next? Okay. Right. I'll give you the hint. Explain first what Q of Z is. Which is the uh, the quadrature? Right, right. Ninety degree phase shift, as if it was differentiating. Uh, let's see, which one was that? That's um, uh, yeah, right. So. Um, uh, what you want to show? Okay, so the envelope. What is that? Um, Independent of where the phase is, it's kind of like um, it's almost like an absolute value sort of thing. Yeah, it's the magnitude yeah. of the com. You know, so you got this uh, x of z, right? That's uh, um, well. So so we're taking quadrature of a of a wavelet, and here it is in. In in you know z transform uh, notation, but um, uh, the uh, um, uh, the key here is is thinking about it, um, uh, realizing that this is just a tricky way of of saying this is a. Uh, um, 
uh, this is a, a phase shift, a 90 degree phase shift. Okay, so let's go to the part of the notes, uh, if I can figure out where that is, um, of the, uh, uh, the notes where I talked about instantaneous, well, where I talked about phase rotation. Okay, because really what we're doing is a 90 degree phase rotation, right? So, um, uh, now how do you know what Q of Z is? Well, that's from the, you know, from the, uh, the, the, the chapter above here. Where he he explains that. Uh, okay, so what's uh, eight? You think? Okay. Great. Glad you guys have this fast. Um, yeah, OK, so there's the definition of the envelope. And, um, and so you just need to show that, uh, that the, uh, um, you know, the magnitude of the complex uh, phase or the complex uh, series uh, stays the same through the phase rotation. So really what you got to show, if, if the envelope of um, uh, basically what we're trying to say is the envelope of y is the same as the envelope of x, which has to mean that the the um, the envelope of uh, of the phase change is one. The you know the amplitude of the phase change is one. There's no amplification. Um, so really, uh, uh, what you're uh, what you're showing is that this uh, <coughs> e to the i uh, epsilon uh, that that has a magnitude of one, right? <laughs> so you know, I mean, here's a statement right here. But if you want to write it out in terms of you know the definition of the Euler uh, you know cosine. Uh, Epsilon uh, plus i sine epsilon, and then find me the uh, the magnitude of that vector. Then uh, uh, you know if that if that cements your understanding, then do that. <clears throat> okay. Does that uh, does that kind of do it for that one? I guess I think we understood it conceptually. It was just trying to figure out how exactly to prove that. What you were doing. Right, right, right. And the, and the first thing here is to realize that you know this uh, these these the z transform notation is just a, a shorthand for something else. Yeah. You know. Um, okay. But that's yeah, that's going to be true of number five too. I, I just want to see, I just want to see you discuss the concept, you know, not not right. prove it. Yeah, well, the five we were still confused. I mean, you explain the question a little bit. Two thirty two exercise one. Ah, uh, right, right. So so. Uh, um, you know, let's let's go to the definition of minimum phase, right? That's um, uh, okay. Characterization. Let's see where. We, oh, that's in number seven. Um, So first, we had to understand what inverse filter meant, um, and then we have an example of minimum phase. But here's here's all the definitions of, of minimum phase. Um, so the uh, 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 you can 
you can answer this quest you can you can interchange the role of time and frequency for all of these five um, properties uh, but you know how you ex you know some of them are easier to explain uh, than others so the um, the the minimum delay may be the maybe the one to start with right so uh, um, <clears throat> um, let's see, with minimum delay, um, if we interchange time and frequency, then uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, for a particular, all right, so the minimum delay, uh, energy arrives most rapidly in time, um, and, and then you know, I, I hope I explained most rapidly in time, most rapidly compared to what? Okay, so we have a bunch of wavelets that have the same spectrum, the same power spectrum. And, uh, and you know, so there's an infinity of wavelets that have the same power spectrum. Okay, um, they all have different phase spectra. Okay, they have the same amplitude spectrum, but the but different phase spectra. Okay, so, so, um, the um, the energy arrives most rapidly. Okay, I'm sorry. The um, um, if we switch time and frequency, what does spectrum mean? That means the uh, the envelope, right? If we are, you know, the spectrum is the square. The envelope squared, right? Is the uh, uh, the the some of the squares of the two components, and that's what we're getting with the uh, with this with the power spectrum in in frequency. So so the envelope. Um, so changing property number four to um, um, uh, to the uh, uh, an interchanging uh, time and frequency. Means that we have, you know, instead of minimum time delay, we have lowest frequency, right? Lowest frequency of all the waves that have the same envelope. You know, this there's there's that much. Um, um, there is there is that much uh, symmetry in the in the Fourier transform, you know. What what goes from from time to frequency will also go from frequency to time. Um, so that's the kind of statement I'm looking for. For as many of these as you can as you can figure out. Um, I think the uh, if you change time and frequency, uh, aren't isn't the uh, the amplitude spectrum just going to be the? <coughs> wait a minute. No, that means uh, uh, the uh, the envelope, right? A of time is the envelope. And the, and then the instantaneous phase is phi of time, right? So the and, and I think that's true. Uh, the Hilbert transform of the uh, instantaneous phase is the is the envelope, and vice versa. So there's another one that's fairly simple. <clears throat> you know, the Hilbert transform is even even more symmetric in 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 uh, in time versus frequency. And then, um, if you change time and frequency for number two, instead of causal, we have we have the concept of no negative frequencies. Uh, so what does that do? That's gonna 
Now, now remember when we made when we made our when we forced our wavelet for number three to be causal, how how spikes in the frequency domain turned into Hilbert transform pairs in the uh, in 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 you know the real or the imaginary, right? So um, now the same thing's going to be happening in time instead of frequency. Uh, let's see if I can do that. I really like this this ED1D, um, or the uh, there used to be a tool called ED1D, um, and it uh, uh, it actually allowed you to to just directly see the uh, um, to directly see the the Fourier uh, or, or the Hilbert transform pairs, but it was much too complicated because it had all it had like I mean, uh, FFT lab has has two domains, and ED one D had they had Kolmogorov they had uh, well they had uh, time frequency Kolmogorov Hilbert and a couple of others so it was way too complicated. <laughs> Um, okay, so now, you know, if I want to reproduce um, what I did in, you know, shifting time and frequency, then um, uh, Okay, and now I'll zero out the negative frequencies. Oops. Well, that's a mess. <laughs> Better start over. I was on negate instead of draw. I didn't want that one. Okay, smooth enough. Uh, and um, okay, we'll put a spike in there and a spike in there, and then we'll we'll use that. We'll make it. Uh, no, I just did. I just did it the wrong way. Good grief. Okay. Okay. So now, um, now I'm putting spikes in the real part. And, uh, now I got to negate the. No, not negate. Zero out the negative frequencies. Okay, so uh, uh, you know it's perfectly. Symmetric. I mean, there's ne there's negative signs, but but it's it's really very symmetric um, between time and frequency here. <clears throat> um, yeah. So that's what's uh, you know the uh, you know forcing forcing the uh, um, forcing the negative frequencies to be zero is is going to be the frequency equivalent of time causality. Um, see what you can come up with for uh, zeros outside the unit circle. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so so your progress around the unit circle, instead of being the frequency, is going to be the time. <laughs> Uh, 
really the, the point here is is this this symmetry between time and frequency. That's the that's what I want you to get out of it. And the uh, the more you play with um, right, so you're creating uh, you know very short. You, you're z transforming in the frequency domain, which means you're creating very short uh, Fourier transforms. Right? You have a you have a simple right. A root is is uh, uh, or or a zero right represents uh, a two term time series. Okay, so a root also a root in the frequency domain would represent a two term Fourier transform, a two term spectrum. You know, just uh, maybe uh, would it be? Hmm, there's a question. That wants more time. Right, 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 right. So you're you're you've got a you've got a long spectrum, but your your uh, your root in the time unit circle is uh, is giving you is is so you're building up a long spectrum up by multiplying a whole bunch of uh, of um, uh, zero and then the first frequency component, um, you know, two-term uh, uh, Fourier transforms, and it's not it's not it's not like when we were doing the doubling formulas in the fast Fourier transform. It's not that we have the zero frequency in the Nyquist; we have the zero frequency in the next one, right? Just like with in time, it's it's zero time and then the first time step. We might have a million. So there might be a million spectral components. We have zero in the first, you know, the lowest frequency component that's not zero. How about that? <laughs> I don't know if you know what Clairbout is trying to do, and there's there a lot of this has happened, but maybe not in this. I don't remember anybody talking about zeros on the unit circle in time. Um, uh, He's trying to foster uh, uh, invention, innovation, by getting people to you know apply these simple concepts, you know, and, and I mean, why? Well, maybe you'll come up with something interesting. You know, if you if you, you know, maybe that maybe there's some problem that's easily solved with these these two term, uh, you know, um, zero frequency and one times uh, delta frequency. Maybe there's something you can solve with those simple roots. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the hope. I haven't heard of anybody using that, but maybe you guys will finally think of it. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Um, so that was number. Five, right. So then exercise two is number six. <clears throat> okay. So here uh, the idea is to is to reverse one of the one of the expressions that I give you because I, I give you uh, um, <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> I, I show you how to do the Hilbert transform um, in, uh, let's see, <clears throat> All right, so we want to invert the Hilbert transform, <clears throat> which should be like uh, instead of doing a uh, uh, an integral, you know, it should be like doing a a derivative. 
and this is this is defined through the log, and that's where this that's where this factor that we can't get u zero is, right? We um, uh, you know if we want to invert the Hilbert transform, right? We uh, we're gonna have to um, do an exponential, and uh, but that requires uh, that requires a uh, um, a phase or a uh, you know u zero is like a uh, uh, the DC level or uh, it's the uh, uh, well here's the here's here's where the problem is expressed up here you know we take the log of f and um, and it's the uh, the log of a plus this unknown uh, uh, phase uncertainty two, of 2 pi. Right? We don't know how many circles it's been around. And that's the, uh, you know, it's that n we can't get when we're inverting the log. Right? So if we invert the, uh, the log, we would have to end up with n, but we don't. It's not there, you know. Uh, and maybe there's a let's see if there's a notation problem. Um, yeah, that that must be up here. Um, uh, in in uh, Clairbaut's expressions of the Hilbert transform, relation of amplitude to phase. I mean that is via. A Hilbert transform, but uh, All right. okay. There's that. There's that quadrature filter. Okay. Right. See, there's Q. Right. Okay. So that's where that's this is all notation from the book. Right. There's the Z transform view of the Hilbert transform. Um, and this would this is this would be one thing to look at in terms of uh, inverting the Hilbert transform. Right. Because you uh, you know if you if you know what the the Z uh, uh, if you know what the Z is then the Z transform representation is, then it's easy to invert it. Um, let's see. Causal wavelet. Okay. Um, right, but I'm not, yeah, you're right, I'm not seeing the U. There's the there's the u. U is the z transform of a real signal input. Okay, so u zero would be the first uh, time step, right? The zero time, the zero time component. Okay, and that's where he gets the uh, the Hilbert impulse response. 
that's the that's the uh, you know the definition of uh, of Q the Q components, but the the U components are just the uh, you know the the time domain um, components of the of the of the pre of the inverted you know Hilbert inverted uh, um, uh, time series. So U zero would be the 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 time series at zero time, and because of this uh, because of this phase thing, we can't get it. Uh, and there's probably a clue to that here too, because U zero is the quadrature filter is uh, is zero at at n equals zero. Um, and that actually uh, that actually comes through the sig signum function. So getting the uh, you know, inverting the Hilbert transform is like applying the signum function. Um, and um, and remember the signum function is defined to yield zero at zero time. So we can't get u zero. Um, uh, because we're when we in, invert it, whatever is there, we're we're multiplying by zero. Okay. Enough for today. Yeah. We can still meet uh, tomorrow at ten. Yeah. There's a few more. Um, We should take a, a couple minutes break here, if you don't mind. Yeah. Oh, and what did you guys think about meeting on on Friday, this Friday, and then two weeks from this Friday? I'm just trying to squeeze you for everything I can get. Right. You know, we got we got AGU we cut off coming up here, but. Oh, you won't be here on Monday through Wednesday next week. Yeah, I will not. Okay. I figured if I'm not going home for Christmas, I should probably go home for Thanksgiving. True. Somebody else. What is that? Seattle? Yeah. Yeah. Just not there. Yeah. 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 I mean, we record them every day, so I can pretty much keep up exactly what's been going on. I mean, I've done that a couple times, and then missed like half a class or something like that. Yeah. It's very handy. Is it? Is it helpful? Yeah, absolutely. Okay.